Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today we are going to be making Pinch Me Frenchie from Vivian Howard's This Will Make It Taste Good cookbook. Now we're going to be using the R-rated onions. I'll link those up here that we made previously. There aren't, a, aren't many recipes, like real recipes to use this, use uh, the R-rated onions in, but Caramelized onions have so many different things, different uses, and there are a bunch of other suggestions of how to use them, but there aren't that many recipes to use it, it, use them. But this is the reason I made them because this sounded absolutely delicious. It is kind of like monkey bread. So uh, pull apart bread that's usually covered with cinnamon and sugar and it's, you know, sticky and sweet, except this, is kind of like the bread that you get on top of French onion soup, which is, you know, caramelized onions and broth. No broth here. Uh, oh, and cheese on top. So you get the bread, the cheese, caramelized onions, just no broth. Um, and it sounded absolutely delicious. So that's why I made those. And this is what we're making today. So it's a bread dough. To start with, she does say, she gives a little hint down there that you could use two eight ounce cans of biscuit dough um, and make this with that instead of making your own yeast dough. But we're gonna go ahead and follow the recipe as is and make the yeast dough. Now, got water, it's warm water, not super hot, but warm. I'm putting it in my mixing bowl here of the stand mixer. I'm going to add the instant yeast and I'm just going to give this a little stir. I always do that. All right. Good enough. We're going to let that dissolve um, for about five minutes before we continue with the recipe. So my timer just went off so it's been five minutes. I'm going to give this another little stir. Okay so now we're going to add the other ingredients for our dough. Um, First thing we need is some olive oil. It's the only thing I haven't pre-measured here. And now I'm gonna add the flour. I've already, already measured this flour, so I'm just gonna dump it all in. She says you can do this part by hand. I'm gonna do everything just in the sand mixer because I'm lazy like that. And then we have some salt, also pre-measured, kosher salt. So we're going to uh, mix this until it comes together and is homogenized and elastic. She says about three minutes, which doesn't seem like a lot, but we'll see. All right, it's been about three minutes and I was just gonna check it out doesn't still it's pretty sticky hmm interesting and it's kind of sticking to the bottom down there um it's homogenized but I don't think I would say it's elastic I'm gonna let it go a little while longer and wash my hands all right this has gone for about five minutes total I'm gonna call it done um it's still kind of sticky but it is what it is uh, I've got a large uh, bowl over here that I have prepared by uh, coating it with olive oil. Um, she says to use cooking spray, which as I've always said, I don't really keep in my kitchen. So I'm sure olive oil will be fine. And now I'm gonna try to get all of this out without having all of it stuck to my hand. I'm gonna go get a spatula actually. Since this is so sticky, I'm going to try and just kind of turn this over in the bowl so that every side gets a little bit of the olive oil so that my tea towel doesn't stick because that is what we're going to do next. So that's our dough. We're going to cover it with a tea towel and let it rise in a generally warm part of your kitchen for about an hour or until doubled. So we'll see you in about an hour. So it's been an hour. My bread dough is almost doubled in size. I put it in my oven, which is 
not preheated yet. It's a little warm just for another few minutes before we deal with it. But now I've spent the rest of my hour getting everything else ready for our savory monkey bread. So I've gathered all of my ingredients and now we have to mix a couple of things together before we're ready to deal with the bread anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, here I have my R-rated onions. They were in the refrigerator, but they've been out for about an hour now. Um, I measured them. They're very sticky and hard to tell that they were sliced onions, but that's okay. Um, I have some melted unsalted butter. Does she say unsalted? Yeah, she says unsalted. So I've got that and we're gonna put this in here. All of it, it's a lot of butter. There we go. And quite a bit of fresh thyme. I picked it directly out of my garden, washed it, picked all the leaves off. So she says picked thyme leaves and it's quite a bit. But we're gonna mix this all together. Don't know how well that's gonna work, but hey, eventually. Because my onions kind of came together as one big thing, one big mass. So, and they were cold. So, I might stick this in my oven to warm up just a bit because I think that the um, cold onions have. Uh, made my butter start to congeal. So I'm gonna stick this in the oven real quick. My oven's not really hot. It was about 100, a little over 100, almost 150 degrees, so not too bad. And now we have cheese. So like I said, we're going for that bread, uh, cheese, onion sort of vibe with this. So I've got a bunch of cheese here. This is, I've got mostly Fontina and a little bit of Gouda to round out the amount um, and this was shredded on a pretty large, you know, the sort of medium shred on my box grater. Uh, I just didn't have quite enough. And she says Fontina, provolone, or Gouda. I'm not a huge fan of aged provolone. So I went with Fontina and Gouda because that's what I had. And then this is Parmesan that I grated on a microplane. So. And we're supposed to mix these up together. She doesn't say that you need to use, you know, two different kinds of cheese up with the other cheese. Um, so just whatever works for you, whatever you like, I'm sure is absolutely fine. Excuse me, I've got a bunt pan here. Um, so this is just sort of a normal size bunt pan, large, normal ones. I know they make very small ones these days. She says to cover it, spray it with cooking spray. Again, I buttered it kind of liberally. Hopefully it'll all work out. Um, my oven is at is not preheated yet. I'll start preheating that as soon as I take the other stuff out. Um, but we're gonna preheat it to 350 degrees. Um, and I have it set so that this can be sort of in the middle of the oven, not too high, not too low, and without a rack on top, just in case. So this has been resting for a little over an hour. I would call that doubled. Um, and we're supposed to punch this down where it belongs. There we go. Um, oh, I'm supposed to flour my hand hands. Um, I'm not going to worry about flouring my hands because they are going to get really messy here now because whew, we are supposed to pinch off a one half inch round of dough, roll it into a ball, and then roll it in the butter onions followed by the cheese. So It's gonna get very messy up in here. And just put it down in the bunt pan. Now she says once you get a layer 
of ball, dough balls down to go ahead and sort of add some extra cheese. I'm gonna add some more, even though I have it sort of covering the whole bottom, I don't think that's really a good layer and it's not anywhere near most of my, um, or even half of my dough. So I'm just gonna work a little bit longer before I do that piece. So now we're supposed to put a third of the remaining cheese, which I don't think we have all that much left. So I'm gonna be a little sparing with the cheese, but I'm gonna be a little less sparing with the onions. Uh, Cause I feel like we're not equal with the way these are going on. I'm just gonna sort of drop these on. Oops. Good for this and roll out the rest of the dough into balls and put them in our duck pan. There we go, put that right there. I'm just gonna scrape with my already dirty hands the rest of this butter onion mixture and there we go now i'm gonna wash my hands and then we're gonna put the towel back on this and let it stand for about 15 minutes before we bake it okay so i've got my same dish towel i'm gonna put this on here i'm gonna put it on top of my stove and we're gonna let it sit for 15 minutes and the oven's already preheated at 350 and so when we uh, put this in, we're going to bake it for 30 to 35 minutes until it is nicely browned on top. So I'll um, let you see what it looks like when I decide to take it out. I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and usually it takes me a little bit longer. Anyway, so we'll see you in about 45-ish minutes when we take this out of the oven. So this has been sitting for 15 minutes and I'm keeping my fingers crossed as well as I can, that this actually comes out. So here we go. This is the best plate I have. It's approximately big enough. We'll see. It doesn't seem like it's actually coming out. And it did, it came out. Goodness, it looks gorgeous, doesn't it? It looks all golden brown and oniony and cheesy, and I can't wait to taste it. It smells delicious while it's baking, just so you know. So, I'm gonna finish up making the rest of the stuff we're having with our dinner, and uh, we'll be back in just a minute and let you know what we think of it. See if you. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make Pinch Me Frenchie from Vivian Howard's newer cookbook, uh, This Will Make It Taste Good. And for this, we used the R-rated onions that we made previously. I'll leave a link to that video up here. Um, and it is basically like the top of a French onion soup without the soup. So it's, and it's not crusty, it's very soft, um, but it's, you've got the, the cheese and the, and it's buttery and um, bread and, and those onions. And um, I really, really liked it. The bread itself was, uh, was not difficult to make and I'm not the bread baker in this family, um, but I just, did it in my uh, stand mixer with the dough hook and everything worked out pretty well. Um, so that was that was not too bad and it doesn't take that long to rise and it's not really fiddly because really you're gonna wrap it up in cheese and um, onions and all of that uh, before you make it. So it doesn't really have to, I mean, it 
it's good. She does say you could use um, canned biscuits for that if you really don't want to make the bread, which is a standard thing that a lot of people do for monkey bread. They use the canned biscuits and roll them in cinnamon sugar and all of that. Um, it was, it turned out of the pan, which I was a little uh, hesitant about, because especially because I don't use the spray, uh, the cooking spray, so I just buttered it. But it did, it turned out of the pan just fine. And um, I thought it was absolutely delicious. It, um, we ended up having it with dinner one night and then we put it in the refrigerator to keep it a little bit longer. And then we reheated it either in the oven or the microwave if you're gonna eat it pretty much immediately. Uh, works just fine. And um, yeah, we really, really liked it. The kids liked it okay. One of mine has a thing about onions and she said it didn't taste too much like onion, so it was fine. But I really enjoyed it. If you decide to make it, please let me know in the comments down below what you think. And uh, if you enjoyed watching me make this, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and come back and watch me make something else next week.